What if we thought of art as something that didn't just exist on museum walls? Or thought of art as something more than just decoration above our sofa? What if art was not just in front of us, but around, behind, and underneath us? That was Scott Burton's philosophy. He wanted art injected into every part of our lives. Now he's got an exhibition, the largest one in the United States ever of his work, at the Pulitzer Foundation. So, I thought we should talk about it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and this is where we talk about the artist you need to know in a hopefully non-pretentious way. In talk about non-pretentious, Scott Burton was more focused on the office workers taking their midday lunch break than he was on the trustees at the museum down the street. Burton was an artist who saw no distinction between art and utility, and he blurred the lines between fine art sculpture and design. Burton started out in the 1960s as a performance and conceptual artist. And in his performance art, he began to think about how people engaged not only with the space around them, but the objects within that space. And he started to think of his work as sculpture in love with furniture. This was his first sculpture. Now obviously you're thinking this is just a chair that could be found in pretty much any house in America in the mid 20th century. And in fact, that's exactly how it started out. It is based on a chair that was actually left behind by the previous tenant in his apartment. Burton was captivated by the chair's signs of its former owner, the uneven legs, the chip surfaces. And in 1975, he cast the chair in bronze, preserving its utility while simultaneously transforming it into a sculpture. It was that same year he first exhibited bronze chair, but he didn't put it inside the gallery hosting the exhibition. It was placed outside, across the street. Some pedestrians thought it was a discarded chair, free for the taking, who were then surprised they couldn't move it because it was so damn heavy. Other passerbys simply paid no attention to it at all. And Burton was delighted that this work became both an image of a chair and also a chair. And this idea of conceptual art disguised as public furniture stayed with him throughout his career. Take a picnic table and four benches from 1979 and located an art park in Lewiston, New York. It's made of cast concrete and to 99.9% .9 of the people that see it, it just seems like a nice yet slightly unconventional picnic table to have lunch on a summer's day. It's not until you look at the model he made for this installation that the truth is finally revealed. Above ground, the table and benches simply look like upside down trapezoids. But when we look below the surface, we actually see the furniture is made of five inverted pyramids. The user is completely oblivious to the entirety of the sculpture, rendering it both a functional piece of furniture and of conceptual art. Around this time, Burton also started designing seating out of carefully chosen boulders. Here's Rock Settee from 1988. From the back, it simply looks like a giant five-ton rock. But as you move around the sculpture, it reveals its true self. It is, in fact, a place to rest. And installed here in the courtyard of a building designed by my all-time favorite architect, more on him in just a minute, it's both confrontational and sublime. Two-part chair was made in 1986, the year of his first museum retrospective. This was also the height of his battle with HIV. At first glance, it appears to be a geometric abstract sculpture. But when you circle the piece, two shapes emerge, and they seem to resemble a pair of bodies in a sexual embrace. Despite the stigma and prejudice, Burton decided to covertly use his work to celebrate queerness in open spaces. 
And as David Getsey astutely notes, the partners within two-part chair both rely on each other, locked in a reciprocal grip. If separated, the two parts would fall to the ground, be unrecognizable as figures, and become useless as furniture. The setting for this exhibition is also an interesting one. It's at the Pulitzer Arts Foundation in St. Louis. It's dedicated to presenting contemporary and historic artwork to a global audience. The building was designed by the Japanese architect Tado Ando, one of his few commissions on U.S. soil. Ando is known for his use of concrete, and he uses this material to represent the beauty of simplicity. Please let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in videos on architecture and architects like Ando. He would be a fun one to take a deep dive into. But the Pulitzer serves as almost a Kunsthalle, an exhibition space that has no permanent collection. But there are three exceptions. Two pieces were commissioned specifically for this space. There's Ellsworth Kelly's 28-foot sculpture, Blue Black, composed of two painted aluminum panels. And Kelly chose the colors, dimensions, and location to achieve a balance with the architecture. The second piece commissioned for the building is Joe, a massive spiraling piece of core 10 steel installed in the courtyard. It's by Richard Serra, and as with much of Serra's work, the viewer is invited to walk through the work, to move through it, and follow the path to the center. I think the real content of these pieces are walking into them, through and around them. The third and final piece in the Pulitzer's collection is Rock Settee by Scott Burton. In this setting, it is both approachable and unexpected and typically the first place I go when I visit the Pulitzer. So again, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on the architect Tato Ando. I'm certainly no expert on architecture, but I do have a deep fascination with it. And apparently Ando would sometimes be a little bit of an asshole, so I think there's really an interesting story there. It would mean a lot if you checked out some of my other videos. I'll put a link to those right here. As always, anyone still watching is an absolute rock star. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao. Not have done the same.